So California's high-speed rail project from Los Angeles to San Francisco appears to be in trouble. Does this mean that high-speed rail is doomed in the United States? Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the MAGA crowd. So with all the news going on in the world, with what's going on in Ukraine, the president proposing a new budget, and so many other things happening, it might seem odd to talk about high-speed rail today. But what prompts this video today is a video I came across just going through YouTube, as so many of us do. And the headline of the video is, What Went Wrong with California's High-Speed Railway? The video included comments by California Governor Gavin Newsom, the former mayor of San Francisco, and certainly a progressive Democrat, if ever there were one, talking about essentially pulling back on the effort. People have been criticizing the rail system as being a rail system from nowhere to nowhere, since the first leg of it stretches through the Central Valley, not reaching to San Francisco or to Los Angeles on either end, but essentially kind of covering the middle part of the system. What's more is the system seems behind schedule and over budget. Oh my, what else could go wrong? But you know, I have a little bit of familiarity with how difficult it is to start high-speed rail systems. Back in 1980, my family and I were living in Paris, actually. And that was right about the time that the SNCF, France's national rail system, was first establishing its first high-speed rail line between Paris and the second largest city in France, Lyon. France had a real advantage in setting up this system in that they essentially ran this rail line down through the middle of a freeway that went from Paris to Lyon. And so it made the acquisition of rights of way very easy for them. But even so, there were people who were ridiculing the idea and much of the world kind of looked on thinking, oh, those French, you know how they are. And yet, now France has a high-speed rail system that's basically the envy of the world. Similarly, in Japan, when they were first building their high-speed rail system, the first line going between Tokyo and the second largest city there, Osaka, that project went way over budget, was way behind schedule, and almost resulted in the firing of the head of the National Railway System of Japan. This is a person now who is revered as the father of high-speed rail in Japan. And Japanese, like the French and most of the Europeans, have come to value their high-speed rail system. So what's the lesson coming out of these projects? And what can we Americans learn from them? Well, the first thing that we can learn is that you need to start somewhere. And frankly, the California project seems a pretty good place to start, considering the fact that they're pretty far along as it is. Is it behind schedule? Yes. Is it over budget? Yes. But projects like this inevitably are going to be over budget and behind schedule. I remember when Massachusetts was starting the project they called the Big Dig, where they were essentially going to put these highways that ran through downtown Boston, essentially cutting the city up. They are going to put it underground, as well as also providing additional access to the airport. Again, that project was over budget, behind schedule. Everybody complained about it. Now everybody loves it. People in Massachusetts can't imagine traveling through Boston without access to the tunnels that were built during the Big Dig. So these kinds of projects are always going to be hard to build. And you need to start somewhere by us completing a real high-speed rail project in California. That will then be a project that people can point to, like the original bullet train between Tokyo and Osaka, or the original TGV between Paris and Lyon in France, where people will say, ah, this is worth something duplicating. Even though it's difficult to put together, painful, expensive, ultimately, the end result is well worth it. I even have some personal experience with this type of issue. Back when I worked for the city of Warren, we went through a process where we bought an old high school that had been closed for a number of years with the aim of turning it into a true community center. That community center would include a new library, new pool, aquatic facility, gyms, a museum for the city's history, as well as meeting rooms that residents and local organizations would be able to take advantage of. That project encountered a buzzsaw of opposition against all the crying and the whining and being over budget and it being too expensive and taking too long. We ended up completing that project, which again is now beloved by the people of this city and really is viewed with envy from other cities some of which, including the neighboring city of Sterling Heights, has decided to copy it. 
So inevitably, municipal projects are going to take time and effort and are going to be difficult and are going to be expensive. But you need to kind of push through that to get to the completion part. Now, there's one last issue to point out here, and that has to do with the particular difficulty of building high-speed rail here in the United States. China, as we've heard, has been incredibly successful in building high-speed rail. And the reason for that is, of course, that they have an autocratic central government that's able to do whatever they want without essentially any kind of public feedback. And that's certainly true, a very different system from what we have in the, here in the United States, obviously. But that's not the only difference, and it doesn't explain some of the differences between, say, here in France or here in Japan. And one thing that jumped out at me in this video was it talked about how China, Japan, and Europe are very good at building high-speed rail, with the exception of the UK. And I thought to myself, with the exception of the UK, well, they're right about that. The UK also has trouble building high-speed rail systems. So what do the United States, the UK, Canada, Australia, even India, some of these countries that have struggled to bid, build high-speed rail systems, especially in comparison to countries like France, Japan, China, the rest of continental Europe. Well, what we have that's different from all these other countries is we've got the common law legal system. It's a legal system that evolved out of the old British system. And one of the fundamental tenets, in fact, really the genesis of the legal system, is the idea of property rights. The fact that we as Americans and British and Canadians and Australians and Indians own property and that the government can't just come and take it away from us when they want to is something that is unique to the common law system. The United States has even taken that to a higher level. The idea of property rights is actually something that's ingrained in our constitution. So it's not surprising that these countries would have trouble building high-speed rail systems. In Japan and China and France and Italy and Spain and these other countries that follow a different legal system, there aren't the private property protections we have here. As a result, the government can come in and simply take land, perhaps provide some compensation, but there's not the painful process of having to justify the taking and having to pay market value for it the way that we have here in the United States. Because, of course, the idea of property rights here in the United States actually trumps the needs of society as a whole. And so we make it difficult for government to take property here, similar to how it is in Britain or Canada or Australia or India. Government can't just swoop in and take property the way it is in these other countries, thus making it much harder to accomplish something like building a new high-speed rail system, which inevitably is going to be going through some of the most densely populated and most expensive property in the country. It's not surprising that it's costing a lot to acquire the property rights to build a new rail system in California, because, of course, they have some of the densest population and some of the most expensive property in the world there. And again, unlike in China, the government can't just swoop in and take it. So my message to everybody is continue to have a little bit of faith. In the infrastructure bill, President Biden included $20 billion for high-speed rail. I would suggest that a good chunk of that, if not all of it, go directly to California. Although I personally wouldn't benefit from that project, the fact of the matter is we need to complete that project before we can move on to others. I know there's going to be pressure to sprinkle this money across the country, but the problem is that then you dilute its impact. And we may find ourselves in a situation where California isn't able to finish this project. And as a result, we won't have this positive example to point to of the kind of advantages that high-speed rail can provide here in the United States. Well, improving American infrastructure really is a key priority here, given how little we've invested in it over the years. Why don't you check out this other video that I have over here about President Biden's infrastructure bill. It wasn't pretty to pass it, but as they say, there are two things you never want to see being made. One is sausage and the other is legislation. And truly, even though it wasn't pretty, it's a real accomplishment that President Biden and the Democrats need to point to. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.